From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Hector, Mr. Dollar. Hector? Hector Nerkley, at the Drakeley Arms Apartments. You were here night before last, inquiring about the late Mr. Morgan. Oh, yes, I remember. What can I do for you, Mr. Nerkley? Oh, it's really quite the other way around. All right, what can you do for me? Well, I can give you some very interesting information, if you care to come over here. Why can't you give it to me on the phone? I'll tell you exactly why, Mr. Dollar. When you come over... Oh, for the love of Pete... Temper, temper. And why not? A month ago, the best friend I had in the world drove his car off a cliff into the Pacific. And his body's still out there in the ocean somewhere. It's never been recovered. Mr. Dollar... Then it turns out he was $80,000 short in his accounts. I can't find the money, you know, the woman he was running around with before his death. I can't find out anything. And now if I want some... All right, I'll be there in 30 minutes. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location San Francisco. To the home office, Eternity Mutual Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the confidential matter. Expense account continued. Item nine, a dollar and 70 cents. Taxi from my hotel to the Drakeley Arms Apartments. A snooty high-priced joint where Ed Morgan had lived during the last four months of his life. Ed Morgan, a pipe and slippers bachelor who'd suddenly and strangely turned to champagne cocktails and high living who, as head of an insurance claims office, had found a way of swindling his employer out of $80,000 in four months, and who died a month ago as mysteriously as he'd lived. This was the man who at the moment was my assignment, whose past I was supposed to uncover. And he was also the man who'd been my lifelong friend. Well, good evening, Mr. Dollar. My, you did make excellent time. <sighs> now, look, if this turns out to be a runaround, so help Temper. me out. Temper? All right. All right, you said you had some very important information that couldn't be discussed over the phone. Well, it could have been discussed, of course. But, well, this information has to do with one of our guests, Mr. Dollar. A certain lovely young widow whom you seem most concerned about the last time. Nikki Barrett. Quite. Has she come back? Is she here? I'm afraid not. Then what is it? First, I must ask you what your intentions are toward Mrs. Barrett. Well, I'm not going to marry her. Please, I hardly thought you were. All right, then what's the point? Simply this. I happen to be in a position to put you in touch with Mrs. Barrett. You know where she's hiding out? Hiding out? All right, I'll drop the implication. Do you know where she is? I do. Well, then let's have it. Why do you wish to find her? Because she's the only lead I've got on the Morgan case. She and Ed were thicker than thieves during the four months before his death. And she was with him the night he was killed. Earlier in the evening, at least. Are you going to have her arrested? No, no. I just want to ask her some questions. I've got no case against her. Not yet, at least. Mr. Dollar. Can I depend upon you in one very important respect? What's that? Under no circumstances must you let Mrs. Barrett know that I told you where she is. What's the matter? Afraid the board of directors would bust you to bellhop and strip off your gardenia? That is not amusing. Nor too improbable, as a matter of fact. After all, the watchword of the Drakeley Arms is discretion. Yeah, well, all right. It's a deal. I won't tell her. Of course, there is one more little detail. Oh, now what? Well, the last time you requested information from me, Mr. Dollar, you were kind enough... And uh, generous enough. Uh, well, really, this is a bit awkward. What is it, Hector? Is the gardenia fund getting low? Well, you did say, as I recall, that it was merely an item in an expense account. All right. Here's another 20 bucks. Oh, thank you, sir. Now, what about Nikki Barrett? Well, we just received a letter from Mrs. Barrett. She asks that her mail be forwarded to her in care of American Express. Panama City, Panama. Item 10, $20, gratuity. Item 11, $388.45, hotels, some telegrams, incidentals in San Francisco, and plane fare to Panama. I'd sent wires ahead before I left the States. It wasn't until after I'd cleared customs and was heading for the American Express office 
that I was certain the messages had produced any results. Uh, dispense me, por favor. Yeah? You are uh, Senor Johnny Dollar from the Estados, no? That's right. Capitan Garcia Ramulio of the Panama Federal Police, oh. as you saw it, me, Oh, glad to know you, Captain. I am honored, Senor. We have received your telegram, and I have been instructed to cooperate with you very intensive. Well, it may take just that. Now, about the woman I described in the telegram. The Senora Barre. Oh, Santa Madre, what a beautiful woman. So I've heard. You have not uh, had the pleasure of acquainting her? Not yet. The best of your life is before you in that case. Then I'll speed up and get to it. So you've already located her, huh? Oh, but of course, senor. She has not um, changed her name, as you think, perhaps. So it was most simple. Good. Glad I didn't cause you too much trouble. Trouble? Senor, merely to gaze upon such a one is worth a lifetime of trouble. Which is exactly what it cost a couple of guys, I know. Uh, such eyes, such hair, such lips, yeah. such... Yeah, uh, well, uh, what do you say uh, we... Forgive uh, me, senor. I am carried away with it. Well, where is this living little doll staked out at the moment? She is registered at the Hotel Primeso, uh, room 17. Uh, Hotel Primeso? This is not the most unusual, I'm thinking. What do you mean? The Primeso is one hotel very small, which is uh, located on the waterfront. It's most for sailors, fishermen. I see. The beautiful tourist, or one would think to find in a hotel of well, more elegance. She may be deliberately staying away from the tourist belt. Yes, Abby, senor. Who can tell the reasons of a woman? Yeah. Is she living there alone? So I have been informed. You expect someone with her? I don't know what to expect. I don't even know why she came here. I'm moving in blind. Uh, see, life is most difficult at times. Uh, you didn't talk to her, did you? Let her know you were checking on her? Please, senor. Uh, I'm sorry, Captain. I had to be sure. She is most entirely without suspicion. Good, good. Well, I suppose I'd better check into a hotel first. Uh, then what are your plans, senor? I don't know exactly. I'll talk to her, try to get some answers. And from there on, I'll just have to call it as I go. I hope uh, this lovely lady has not involved in some uh, serious crime. I hope not, too. But I wouldn't bet much on it. <laughs> Item 12, $8, taxi, flat rate for the rest of the day. And by the time I checked into a hotel and showered and changed, the rest of the day didn't have long to go. The Hotel Promesa was on the waterfront, as Captain Garcia had said, and some distance from town. But although it wasn't a tourist trap, neither was it quite the sailor's flop house I'd been led to expect. It was built native style with bamboo shutters and wide verandas, half buried in a thicket of mango and banana. Five bucks bought me the desk clerk's undying affection, and two minutes later I stood unannounced at the door of room 17. Just a minute. It's about time. I ordered that ice at least a... I, I thought you were the bellboy. No. The name is Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar. Mind if I come in, Mrs. Barrett? What for? Well, it would be more comfortable than trying to talk out here in the veranda. What is it you want to talk about? A friend of mine, name of Ed Morgan. All right. Come on in. Sit down, Mr. Dollar. Thanks. I'd offer you a drink, but there's no ice. And it isn't this kind of heat. I don't warm... care for a drink, thanks. You'd think it would cool off after the sun goes down, but it doesn't, at least not very much. Sometimes a breeze comes up from the... from... What are you staring at, Mr. Dollar? You. Why? I'd had such glowing reports about you that I was sure they were exaggerated. They weren't. Thanks. And did you come all the way down here just to check those glowing reports? How do you know I came all the way down here? What do you mean? Maybe I live here. No. I've heard of you before. Ed, Mr. Morgan used to talk about you. Was it Ed or Mr. Morgan? You don't miss much, do you? I try not to. It was Ed, as you undoubtedly knew. Yes, I knew. But I wasn't sure why. Why? Why he lost his head. Now that I've seen you, I can understand. Who wouldn't? Oh, please. I'd rather not talk about it, Mr. Dollar. Ever since that terrible accident, there's been only one thing I've wanted... To forget. Well, I'm sorry to have to bring up unpleasant memories, Mrs. Barrett, but I've got to ask you some questions. There's nothing... The night I... of his death, what time did he leave you? What do you mean? You were together earlier in the evening. You left the bar at the Drigley Arms together at 9 o'clock, but shortly after midnight, when Ed ran his car off a cliff into the Pacific, he was apparently alone. 
We went to dinner, then he brought me back to the apartment house. He was going to Half Moon Bay to see a client. That's why he happened to be on that road. I don't want to talk about it, Mr. Dollar. It's horrible to think of him dying that way. His body's still out there in the ocean somewhere. That's why I came down here. To get away and try to forget. Then you thought quite a lot of him, huh? We were going to be married. I see. Well, it's uh, it's too bad it didn't work out with all the wealth Ed had and the beauty you well, have. Why, I... I had the idea that he just worked for an insurance company. And lived the way he did? Oh, come now, Mrs. Barrett. Well, actually, I didn't really consider it. My husband had left me quite well off. How long were you married before he died? Only ten months. Oh, you do have bad luck, don't you? I don't think this attitude of yours Relax. Is... Here, have a cigarette. I don't smoke. Oh. Do you mind if I do? No, of course not. Thanks. Do you have a suite here, Mrs. Barrett, or just this one room? Just this room. Why? Oh, and then this door must lead to the bath. What do you think you're doing? Empty, huh? Of course it's empty. Uh-huh. Then the other possibility is that closet. Stay away from there. When I came in, there was cigarette smoke in the air, stubs in the ashtray. There's no one here. Stay away from there. Oh, look, Mrs. Barrett, turning out the lights may be romantic, but it's not the idea of... What? You... I was still conscious but groggy, and I couldn't seem to get off the floor. I heard someone moving, heard the door to the veranda open and close. I shook my head, tried to clear it. I finally staggered to my feet and found the light switch. Nicky Barrett was cowering back against the wall, staring at me, scared, but not saying anything. I stumbled toward the door. The veranda was empty. There was no sign of movement in the shadows. So there was somebody hiding in that closet. No. There wasn't anybody here. I'm the one who hit you. You'd have to have a fist three times your size. It's true. Forget it. I know the game now. I should have known it a lot sooner. You're wrong. There's only one person in this world who tears cigarettes apart and shreds the paper that way. No! The two of you, in on it together. They didn't find his body because there wasn't anybody to find. He's still alive. He was right here in this room. That was Ed Morgan. Now, here is our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, a search for a dead man who intends to stay dead and who's willing to kill to do it. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Hugh Brundage speaking. <laughs>